girls, I'm so glad that you could join us. This is one of my favorite people, my favorite craft people. And she's, um, I met Karen initially through um, a mastermind, through Craft Industry Alliance. We got paired randomly into a mastermind group. And she's just the nicest person in the world. So I know nothing about crochet. I've always wanted to learn how to crochet and why they paired me with somebody who's written literally 30 books. We were just talking about, she's written 30 (laughs) books on how to crochet. Um, Why they paired me with her beyond me, but it's been just so much fun. And the masterminds were only supposed to last what? Three months, six or eight weeks. Oh no. Yeah. That was supposed to be three months. Yeah. There was supposed to be like three months and we all like each other so much. We just kept it going. So yeah, we're going anyway. on what, two years now? Yes. <laughs> Hi, Deborah. Thanks for joining us. So I was just introducing Karen. Um, she is my crochet friend. I, I keep wanting to say my new friend, but you're not my new friend. <laughs> but if I say like my old friend, it still feels new. So new, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how to describe it. Anyway, she's a mastermind friend of mine and much more. We've never met in person, but we are going to meet in person in September uh, because Karen is coming to the Dallas Fort Worth area to participate in DFW Fiber Fest. So that's what it's called, right? Fiber yeah. Fest. Yeah. Yeah. And she is one of the featured instructors and has a number of classes there. So she'll we'll get into that in a minute. But I wanted you guys to meet this really cool person because she's so creative and she's made a whole business out of it. I know that there are days where all of us sit there and go, you know what? Wouldn't it be nice if this could just be my life? Because <laughs> we all do crafting to kind of escape, right? Um, but you've actually taken it to the next level. So I wanted to kind of share your story with as many people as I could. Why don't you tell us, like, how, when did you start crocheting? Like, tell me your crochet story. And then I've got a hundred questions to ask, including wibbles. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so in 1974, I'm going to date myself here. Um, I was seven years old. It was summer. And my mom used to drop up my sister and I off at my grandmother's house when she would go to the doctor or the dentist or whatever. And we would spend, you know, time with them. And I was seven. My sister was uh, five. And this one day, my grandmother got this hair, uh, wild hair that my sister and I watched way too much television. And so she, and my sister was too young. She didn't have the motor dexterity in her hands yet. So she sent my sister out to the, in the, to the backyard with my grandfather and they played, you know, and did all the things and the gardening and stuff. And she gave me, still have it, this crochet hook and the god awful yarns of the 1970s, <laughs> the acrylic yarns. And proceeded to teach me all six basic stitches, um, chain, single crochet, half double, double, triple, and slip stitch, all the stitches. There's only six? Well, those are the basic stitches. There's more stitches out there, and it's all based on how you, well, we can get into that later. (laughs) But um, this is the, the very first crochet hook I ever had. I still have it. It's like my prized possession. It's in a special spot, but I had to pull it out just for you guys to see it. (laughs) But then after she taught me the stitches, my very first project (laughs) was a covered crochet, a covered coat hanger. And I I literally had to pry this from my mother's hands to get it back probably about two years ago, three years ago, because she would not let it go. But I told her I needed to be able to show it to people (laughs) these days. But um, you can see here, this yellow is where my grandmother showed me how to crochet. And then here are my little seven-year-old bulky stitches, missing stitches, all sorts of stuff. And it was just a flat piece. And then she showed me how to whip stitch. And again, you can see where my grandmother's nice, even stitches were. (laughs) And here's me whip stitching all the the fun stuff, you know, so that was the very first time I ever crocheted. And I finished this in two hours after learning. Yeah. And so I should tell you, start with, she learned to crochet from her grandmother in Italy. She grew up in Italy. 
And so um, the next time I saw her, she only lived about 15 minutes away from us. She gave me a size six steel, which I didn't pull out, but they're those really tiny crochet hooks and size 10 thread, which is like this, <laughs> this stuff that you see at the store. Oh, and gosh. I learned Italian lace, literally edgings, um, doilies, amicasters, all sorts of stuff, you know, Venetian lace, all that stuff. And um, for at least two or three years, that's all I did was thread. I mean, just thread work, just learning the lace and, and all that. But my grandmother couldn't speak um, English. So I learned to crochet in Italian and she couldn't read a pattern. So we would use a magnifying glass and look at pictures and then we would pick apart the pattern and that's how I created things. So I'm self-taught in learning how to write patterns, how to read patterns. I did take one class when I was about 12 and they told, they told my mom not to bring me back and gave her money back because I was so far ahead of everybody else in the class. <laughs> so um, even though I couldn't read a pattern at that point, but they, but I learned by getting like leisure arts leaflets and my mom would get me magazines or my grandmother would, you, I, I'm really dating myself, but my grandmother used to um, get clippings out of the newspaper where you could mail order patterns Oh yeah, and she would buy those. And that's how I got patterns at first. Um, but a lot of it was just her and I, um, you know, just working together. And then, you know, I would buy a pattern at the store. My mom and I would be somewhere and I'd say a pattern I want to make. And that's where the magnifying glass came in because I would buy the yarn and we'd sit there and look at it. So, so that's I, how I learned to crochet. And um, through the years, um, I always, um, I never have really put my hook down for very long. I mean, I crocheted all through high school. My friends would make fun of me. And now they're all to asking me to make things for their kids and their grandkids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> who's laughing that. now? <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, they're like, why didn't you teach us? <laughs> like. You guys said I was going to be a great grandmother. <laughs> so, um, but um, in college, my I decorated our my dorm room with my roommate. I made snowflakes and Christmas stockings. And when everybody saw my snowflakes, I'd make them for the whole um, on the floor. When you got off the elevator, there was like a an area that everybody could meet in, and I had to decorate that with snowflakes. So everybody got a snowflake that year. And then, you know, as my cousins, all of these, I'm the second youngest of seven grandchildren on that on my mom's side of the family. And my, all my cousins were having babies and I'm making baby blankets and, and stuff like that. So that's kind of where my crochet really started. So where did you pivot from, I'm really good at this and I love to make a lot of stuff to, hey, I'm going to make a business out of this. <laughs> That was fast forward quite a few years. I'm out of college and my husband and I are uh, married. This was back in 19, 1998. My youngest was born in July, actually, so 25 years ago. And um, I, I was a stay-at-home mom. And I knew I kind of had to figure out a way to kind of bring in a little bit of income because it was a little tight with two little kids and and all of that. Um, but that was when the internet was really starting to pick up steam. And I don't know if any of you guys remember CompuServe. Yeah. <laughs> CompuServe had groups where you could join groups. And I found this group called Crochet Partners. And believe it or not, they're still around. In fact, I was just on the group this morning chatting with some people. <laughs> but um, I found this group called Crochet Partners. And I had no idea other than my grandmother and I that there was anybody out there that crocheted ever. I mean, that's just how small my, my circle was. And um, well, this was probably in 95, 96 when my son was born that I found him. But then in, in 1998, just after my daughter was born, I met a woman named Terry Kimbrough. I don't know if anybody recognizes that name, but she's huge with leisure arts. She has hundreds of leaflets that leisure arts you can go on the leisure arts website and type in her name and you will see all her stuff and she her youngest son and my youngest my daughter 
were born on the exact same day, exact same year. So that's how we bonded. But um, she saw my work and she kept saying to me, you need to submit these to magazines. And so she helped me walk through the process. And the first design that I sent to Annie's Attic, at that time it was Annie's Attic, not Annie's catalog. Um, Annie's Attic was bought and it was three dish, uh, three dish cloths that had flowers on them. And that was, they were sold in, um, I think they bought them in December of 98, but they weren't published until 2000. Believe That's how long the whole process took. Wow. Back in those days, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't as easy as to get a pattern up there. You could design a pattern and get it on your website in a single day if you really wanted to these days, but that's how I started. And so my kids were young. I mean, my daughter was six months old when they actually bought the pattern, but I had been working to get there since just like a week after she was born. So that's why I consider this month, my anniversary month. Um, and then um, as they, she was six months old and Tyler was, Tyler was just, had just turned two in September when I, they sold my, so they were tiny. So I couldn't, you know, build a business. So my business grew as they grew. Then the more self-sufficient they got, the more I could do. And then in 2004, I started traveling to teach classes my husband said, okay, you can have a week. I'll stay home with the kids and you can go off and do your crochet thing. And that's kind of how it just built. And as they got older, I could design more. The first year, I think I designed like maybe four patterns for a magazine. And then the next year, it might have been six. And it just built like that. So it, it built like that. Yeah. So for those of you who joined late, she's written 30 books. <laughs> And you can get them all on Amazon and she teaches classes all around the country and she's kind of a big deal. Um, (laughs) She's coming to Dallas and she's going to teach at the DFW Fiber Fest. So we're super excited about that. And we'll have to do like a little meetup um, for everyone so that they can get to know her. But tell them where you are today with it, because now you're not, so you've got the books, but you also have like your club and I do. Um, So, yeah. So from designing for magazines has now grown into my own pattern line because I very rarely will I submit to a magazine anymore because I, you lose your creative control. If any of you have ever talked to anybody who does any craft, you lose your creative control when you submit to a magazine. So I decided in 2010, I was not going to submit unless it was something that really piqued my interest and they were going to stick with my vision. So I have my own pattern line. I, um, I have my books. Um, a lot of my books, those 30 are leisure arts and Annie's um, leaflets, but I have self-published um, for three four, seven, eight, eight paperback books, self-published, and then two um, ebook that are strictly just ebooks. And then I have, I teach nationwide and I also have a, a membership community um, called the Crochet Crew that just started two years ago, born out of the pandemic. Because <laughs> um, I, I used to teach four events a year and I was missing my people. So I had to do something to start the crochet. And that's where the crochet crew was born. And so there's all this buzz about like these new tennis shoes, these new sneakers are going to drop on whatever day. Just casually mentioned when we joined on today, I've got a new pattern dropping tomorrow and showed it. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of talk about like, how often do you drop a pattern? Is it just on your website is exclusive to the crochet club. Like kind of talk about that. And then we're going to, then I'm going to like ask you lots of like crochet. Okay. Eat questions. <laughs> well, okay. So uh, tomorrow on my website, my fingerless mitt pattern is dropping. It's a cable. And the, the cool, the interesting thing about these cables is if you look at them closely, you can see one cable leans one way and one cable leans the other way. So that's what's really cool about these. They're also, if I don't know how many of you are crocheters or knitters, but if you know anything about yarn and how yarn is categorized, 
This is DK weight yarn. So it's not really a worsted. That's a like th if you've ever been to Michael's or, um, or, or Joanne's, the, the worst, the Red Heart Super Savers worsted. This is actually a little bit thinner than that. It's a DK stands for double knitting. Okay. Um, it's a, a UK term. I don't know where it came from, to be honest with you. I can just tell you it's a little bit thinner. And my people, because I'm, I'm, I'm my background's Italian lace, I like lace weight yarns. I like fingering weight, which you use for socks and shawls and stuff like that. So they've all been asking for me to do something in DK. So that's where this pattern was born. And um, as far as how often I um, produce patterns, right now I'm doing about one, well, I am doing one pattern a month, at least through the end of this year. Um, back in 2021, um, I was diagnosed with cancer. And while I was going through my treatments, all I could do was crochet. And in six months, I designed 18 patterns. <laughs> Crocheted up, written, I mean, they had to be tech edited and tested and all that stuff. But the actual from conception to complete pattern written down was six months, 18 patterns, just because that's all I could do. I couldn't, I didn't feel like doing anything else. I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep. So I was crocheting. Um, so those patterns, this is one of those patterns that I did um, during that whole little period. And I'm cancer free, just so you guys know, I have bladder cancer. So I am cancer free. Okay. I, you know, I've already had my six month appointment and I'm good. But uh, um, uh now I'm designing, I'm actually designing a little bit into next year. Next year, it looks like I'm going to have six to eight patterns rather than 12. But what I do with every pattern that I release, I started in January, every pattern that I released this year and going forward also has help videos on YouTube. And so those help videos, um, you know, they're, they have the ads on, on YouTube and all that, but my crochet crew gets the pattern for free and gets the ad free videos that are in, um, uploaded into their community so that they have access to them all the time. So that's something that I do for the crochet crew and with my patterns. And I'll be doing a lot more of that. I have a crochet along coming up next week or next month, um, a mystery crochet along. And so I'll be talking about that soon and all sorts of stuff. Mystery crochet? <laughs> it's a pattern I design and every week I drop a portion of the pattern and then they crochet it. I mean, they don't know what it looks like. They, they only know what it is. You know, is it a cowl? Is it a shawl? Is it, you know, I'll tell them when I announce it, what that pattern is. And then I, then when they join, they, um, I give them a list of, you know, all the materials that they need. If, you know, if they, they need multiple colors, you know, all the weights and all that stuff. And then um, when it starts the first week, I, I drop the first part of the pattern and they crochet it up and they, and then they get the next week, they get another part of the pattern and they crochet that up. And there's usually prizes, you know, I usually give away some yarn or some tools or something to go along with it. My crochet crew gets all their crochet alongs for free. And anybody who's not part of the crochet crew has to pay a little bit. It depends on what the cost of the pattern is. Well, so. I can confidently say if I took up crochet, it would always be a mystery as to what it would turn out to be. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, so let's talk about crochet. Why does it seem so hard? Is it hard? Like, I don't think anybody, well, I don't know Deborah, so I don't know if she's a crocheter. She can tell us in chat. I don't think anybody else who's on this call crochets. Am I right? Oh, you do? Oh, Okay. So Laura's also an architect and an artist and a man. Oh, okay. She could do everything because I didn't know she could cool. crochet too. Um, Paula, do you crochet? I don't think she does. I only do, I only do a single chain um, and I've only done it in the recent 20 years doing jewelry. So no, I don't, but I would love to learn more. I, it's a patience thing. Well, okay. we're going to come back to that jewelry comment because Karen's classes that she's teaching at DFW Fiberfest have Paula written all over them. Oh, man. <laughs> what about Sevi? Sevi, do you crochet? Deborah's a beginning crocheter. Okay. Well, I, I attempted. It did not go very well, I, but I did make an attempt. Now, it was not an honest attempt, but it was an attempt. 
Am I willing That's okay. to and I hear that a lot. I hear from so many people that they they learned as a child, they learned how to chain single crochet or maybe make a granny square and then they stopped and now they're they're relearning it or they want to relearn it because they see all the cool things that are coming out. Um, there's other people who minute. use it, like like Paula said, for certain things that they're already doing. I know a lot of knitters who just know the basics so they can do crocheted edgings on their knitted pieces. You know, a lot of people do um, knit a uh, crocheted um, edging on their on their necklines or on the hems of their sweaters, things like that. So there's a couple of things that fascinate me. Um, you talk about working with the dyers. And whenever you talk about working with the dyers, I'm just like starry. <laughs> so you actually work with, okay, maybe you should talk about dyers. Weight. Uh -huh. weight well, I work with yarn companies in general, but my specialty is working with the independent dyers. So if you've never heard of independent dyers, um, let me find a couple of these. Oh, this one's actually a cool one. Independent dyers are labels that you can buy like in your local yarn shops, not the Michaels and the, and the Joannes of the world, but the, the actual yarn shops that they call knitting shops. They are actually branching out. Most of them are branching out into crochet now. And independent dyers literally buy blank yarn and dye it the color. So this is, in fact, I just bought this this weekend from a, a dyer who I just met a couple months ago. She was at our local yarn shop here. And um, this is a, a Tweedy, can you see like there's the black? So when she bought the base, it was white with just this black thread going through it because that's the natural color of the sheep. And then she dyed it, this green to teal. Oh, color. wow. This is, I just got this because I just fell in love with these colors. This is a self-striping yarn that was hand dyed. So what um, does that work? I don't know the secrets on this. All I know is that with striping, you have to dye a certain area of the yarn so that all of it is one color and then the next section is all one color and the next, and then they, they do that multiple times. So, and then this, this particular dyer, not only does she hand dye the yarns, but she hand winds them into these balls so that you can see all the colors. Wow. So I don't have to do anything, but take the tag off and find the end. And then I can just knit or crochet with it. So, yeah. You so hand dyers, they buy the blanks and then they, they dye them to their own colors. I, correct me if I'm wrong, but in one of our meetings, you talked about tie dye yarn. Yes. <laughs> so I, I work with a dyer her and she's going to be at DFW. Her, her name is Savvy Skeens. So if you go to DFW, Savvy is that her real name or is that like her Instagram handle? That is her Instagram handle too. Okay. Savvy Skeens. And she... Like a skein of yarn that's really her last name? No, 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 no. The name of her company is Savvy Skeens. Oh, okay. oh no, 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 no. I'm sorry. <laughs> Savvy, S-A-V-V-Y. Okay, got it. Well, we have Savvy. So Savvy was, yes. you know, Savannah. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have... Yeah. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> But she, her, her company will be at DFW, but she, when you find, I don't want to open that up. I'm trying to find a hank that I can open up. Oh, this one. When is the DFW event? It's September 13th, uh, 14th through the 17th in it's, Irving. Um, DFWfiberfest.org, I believe. Yeah. And they have some amazing classes in there. I mean, they like, I'm hating myself for not knowing how to crochet because I really want to take like a bunch of them, but I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so for tie dyeing yarn, um, when the dyers go to dye their yarn, for the most part, I know for a fact when they're doing a self striping, they don't do it this way. But for with the tie dyeing, the yarn is always in a circular thing like this. Okay. And then what she does is she ties off, just like we did when we were tie-dyeing shirts as kids, she ties off certain areas with, um, what do you call it, um, a zip ties. And sometimes she'll buckle them so that they're like this, or she'll just put in certain areas. And when she dyes it, wherever the, the zip tie is, 
doesn't take color. So you okay. have that tie dye effect when you look at the skein. Okay. And then when, and so she'll have it there. That's her, her brand new way of dyeing. And so she's got all of her stuff. She's got Monarch Butterfly, which is absolutely beautiful. In the hank like this, it looks like the, the colors and the stripings of the Monarch Butterfly. So hand dyers are very creative. They do all sorts of things. You can get speckles, like on my cowl here. You can see the speckles. Oh, and then there, and then it went to a, this is a gradient skein. So they, she dyed it. This first part was all speckled. And then the, the colors just gradiated into different colors. So, um, yeah, so there's different ways. There's kettle dyeing, there's acid dyes, there's plant dyes, there's all sorts of stuff. But the reason I gravitate toward hand dyers more than the box, I call, we call them the box store yarns, the Michaels, the Red Hearts and the Lion Brands and the, all that is because the hand dyers will go to source yarns that are high quality they have the yak and they have the cashmere and they have the silks. I mean, there's still the merinos and the nylon in, in there, some of them. And then there's the cotton. Some of them will get like a cotton acrylic blend that they'll hand dye. But they're a nicer quality than what you see from Red Heart and Yarn Inspirations and all that. And the one thing I can tell you I learned from my grandmother <laughs> is that the better quality the yarn, the better quality the project. So... I mean, I have Red Heart back here, um, you know, and I use it for my nieces and nephews who are having babies and I'm making the baby blankets because I know they don't know how to take care of them. But when my daughter had our first grandson, I spent $200 and got 100% superwash wool because I know she knows how to take care of it. And so um, she got this gorgeous that all my nieces and nephews are drooling over, but I would never make for them because I know it would shrink down about this big you know <laughs> so um for sure. and there's nothing wrong with like the red hearts I mean the one thing that um a lot of people say is that crocheters are cheap and they that's why you, they you know they always buy always start with red heart and lion brand and all those other yarns but I believe that in the 60s and the 70s they were the only yarns out there and they really targeted crocheters. And they, I mean, my grandmother bought me, you know, the Dazzle Airs and the Red Hearts and the, and the stuff, but that, but there was nothing like, you know, 100% Merino wool. This is a Merino um, skein. So, but once you start looking at the quality of the yarns, I mean, if I'm a crochet to the exact same sweater in acrylic and in a, in a, in a um, merino wool you would want to wear the merino wool you wouldn't want to wear the acrylic so I was walking through Joanne's probably a couple of years ago and I remember they had a whole stand-up display of yarn that was from Schitt's Creek and I was like what like is this like a new collaboration that like yarn companies are collaborating with pop culture like are we going to see Barbie yarn are we going to like, what's next? What's coming? Uh, well, if you if you saw Mr. Rogers neighborhood, I uh -huh. know the designer who knit all the sweaters that Tom Hanks wore in that movie. I mean, I know the knitter <laughs> who did that. Um, that's what's happening right now. I mean, um, my mentor in the business is Melissa Leapman. If anybody's ever heard her name, she used to design crochet and knit for the fashion houses in New York City. So that's where she lives. And she still does. I mean, I know she's done some stuff for some of the major things, um, but movies especially that you'll see, you know, or TV shows, you'll see like a, a granny square blanket on the back. They, they pay for that stuff. And now what the hand dyers are doing is they are creating colorways that are um, inspired by like Outlander or Star Wars, like I just completed a, well, actually, this one. No, this one is was based on Ho, um, Hocus Pocus, the movie <laughs> Hocus Pocus, the yarn colors. Yes. Um, this was, I did this for a dyer. And that's what they do. They, they, things are inspired. The colors are named after different things in the movies or the TV shows. So like the Schitt's Creek, you know, um, 
I just I just finished it's actually on its way to the um the photographer, but I just finished one for the Empire Star Wars themed colors. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. So when she asked me if I wanted to do Star Wars, I hit yes, please. <laughs> and so um, but yeah, that's that's a, and she this particular dyer, her name is uh, Forbidden Fiber Company. She will also be a big DFW. Um, she is very into the fandoms, so a lot of her her kits are fandoms. I know she's got an Outlander. She has a Neil whole Neil Diamond series um, that she did. Her father was a huge Neil Diamond fan, so she did that in his memory. You know things like that. Mm-hmm. That's, so, that's what happens with the yarn dyers. That's why I love working with them too. They're so creative. It's not like the, the, the standard yarns that you can get, like the universal yarns and the Barocco yarns, the big names in the yarn industry. Um, they, it's not that they don't have great yarns, but there's something about indie dyers. They're a small business and they're fun to work with. So there's probably ideal yarn for different types of projects. Like... Dawn makes the animals and the immigrant kind kind of stuff, right? So that's amazing. And then you do a lot of the clothing. Would those two types of, like, if she wanted to make a higher end animal, would she use a merino, or would it not hold she up? She could. She could. She. Um, the, the nice thing about the amigurumis is that you have a little more. Creative license, I guess, is the best word just to say. You pick the yarn that you want for what it will look like. There is going to be a crochet teacher at DFW, Allison Hoffman, who designs Amakurumi. And she, um, the first time I met her, she had just finished a Pee Wee Herman Amakurumi. And she actually gave it to Pee Wee Herman. But when I saw it, it was made out of wool It had mohair in it for different things. It had, you know, his hair was a different kind of yarn. You get to do that kind of creative thing. Um, When it comes to like garments or shawls or things like that, you want something that's got a lot of drape. So like this one has a little bit of silk in it. So you can get a little shine. Um, And then with crochet, you have to adjust your hook to make the stitches either really tight for like amigurumi so that stuffing doesn't come out of it. Mm-hmm. Or in the case of lace, you want bigger stitches, open stitches, a lot of holes to give it more drape and swing and, and that kind of thing. So the bigger the hook, the wider the stitch? The wider the holes, the more drape you get. If the, the, the tighter, the smaller the hook, you get like Kelvar. <laughs> it's tight. It doesn't move. I mean, that's right. most crocheters when they're first learning to crochet, they're so tight and the, the fabric doesn't move no matter what kind of yarn they use. And it's just, it's a tension thing, but by going up hook sizes, you get to, you know, getting a bigger hook, you, okay. you can adjust how that fabric feels and how it looks. Okay. All right. So I had a whole bunch of questions. Let me see if we've hit all of them. So one of my questions was where should we be buying yarn and where shouldn't we? But that kind of lends itself to the independent dyers, but I don't know. Do, do you guys know if we even have a knit shop around here? I'm sure. Oh yeah. You've got one in Irving. I know that. Oh, we do. Uh, Yeah. Texas has a ton of, and some of them will be at the show. So they're shopping at the show. They're shopping at the show. There's a huge market at the show. This okay. is probably one of the best markets of all the events I teach at is that in this event. And okay. they have not only crochet and knit, but they have weavers, they have spinners. I think they have um, felters. So you can get the you know, needle felting, that kind of thing. I'm trying to remember all the classes I saw. There's one guy, Carson Deemers, who's going to teach the um, how to knit and crochet properly so you're not getting the carpal tunnels or the sore backs or the sore necks. He's doing a whole class on that. I think that class is the one class that I saw the other day that sold out. But I mean, you're going to get those kinds of classes here. I like, But I know Texas has a lot of of yarn shops because um, a few years ago I was um, down in Austin and I was at a shop there and I cannot think of the name of the shop now that I taught some classes there and so, yeah, so I know George. About some other trends, like I saw um, 
there were a couple of classes I thought were adorable. And I don't know if this is maybe just that particular artist's expertise or if that's maybe something that's kind of coming. She was making, um, I think they're like pins, but they were like family portraits or pet yeah. portraits. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. People love that. I mean, anybody like, I squealed when I saw that. Love that stuff. <laughs> It's so that's, a, that's a whole a whole niche of its own. I mean, I will do stuffed animals in the Yamagurumi. I did them for my kids when they were young, but there's a whole movement out there that loves that stuff. Yeah. So, what are some other interesting trends in in the fiber? I guess the fiber trends. Um, well, if you look even in fashion right now, um, granny squares are huge again. Huge, yeah. huge, and. I've made enough granny squares in my lifetime. <laughs> I mean, I'll teach them to people because that's one of the natural steps of learning to crochet, but I'm done with designing in granny squares and things like that. Um, but they're huge right now. Um, actually, this is what they call a cowboy cowl. I'm going to take it off. It's, it looks like a shawl, but it's actually connected. So it's an easy way to wear a shawl around your neck and not have it falling off your shoulders all the time is still a cowl. They call them a cowboy cowl. And it's like a baby. that is huge right now. In fact, um, this particular pattern is going to be the featured make along for Dallas Fort Worth Fiber Fest. And they're not announcing that until Friday. And I've already sold in the last week, 10 patterns for this. And that's just off of people finding my website and finding this pattern. So it's not even anything to do with DFW. Because these are so huge right now. Um, you need to make fast. a bunch of them to come to cowboy country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, garments right now are a bit really big, but you have to be careful with garments because there's um, there's the professional designers like I am who have gone through you know, all the years of working with magazines and understanding how to grade a pattern for different sizes and different everything. And then there's all the new designers who haven't been through that yet. And there's, they're creating these beautiful garments, but they don't know how to write the pattern yet. And so I get a lot of questions on my website from my people in the crochet crew and everything that they, they, they bought this pattern or they got this free pattern and they can't make heads or tails of it. So garments, I'd be very careful where you buy them, but garments are huge right now. Shawls, have always been a big thing. Um, ponchos are coming back, believe it or not. I actually, I don't have it here with me, but I have a poncho pattern that came out in May. If you go to my website, it's called Wildflower. Did you tell Deborah what my website was? <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> so on the front, Wildflower is on the front page of my website, so you can see that poncho. I'm trying to think what else is. I mean, that's kind of it. I mean, there's a lot of amigurumi is huge. I mean, there's all that. And then there's a whole category that we didn't talk about is what we call free form crochet. What's that? And free form crochet is, I had a friend, she recently passed away, but she was like the mother of free form. Um, basically, you take all your leftovers of yarn and then you buy some extras that are kind of like fancy. Like you could be, mohair. It could be something that has like strings, we call them eyelashes, hanging off, mm -hmm. um, you know, really funky yarns. And you make these little motifs and you can make anything you want. You can make flowers, you can just make circles, squares, whatever it is that, um, you know, you, you really enjoy doing. And then you put them all together and people make garments. They make blankets. Um, Bonnie, the one who I just was saying is the mother, she used to have this coat that was I mean, duster laid, just all done in little motifs like this, you know, and it's all put together. And freeform, you have to have the right brain for that. You have to have, you have to be able to say, okay, I'm going to put this one here. I don't have to have the same thing on the other side. See, I'm a very matchy matchy. Everything's got to be lined up properly. I can never do freeform. I've tried. I can't tell you how many times I've tried but I'm so linear with the way I crochet. And I think it's because of the lace. Um, but you definitely have to just type in freeform crochet or Bonnie Pierce freeform crochet. 
and you will see some amazing stuff. It's just beautiful. It's beautiful. I just wish I could do it. It kind of reminds me, Laura, when you were doing the fabric scraps, what did you call it when you sewed them all together? There's a, there's a, term. oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. The, the quilting where you just, yeah. All the scrap, I'm blanking on the name, but yes, that's exactly right. Well, what I used to do though, is I used to have, um, I did this for my kids when they were in school and we had the school auctions we would get pieces of fabric and we'd cut them into like squares, like six or eight inch squares. And the kids would decorate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the, the, the square for each kid fingerprints. in the class. Yeah. The hand, we, yeah. We did fingerprints one year, one year we had them write in their own handwriting, what they wanted to be when they grew up. And then we, we ironed on their photo and then I had them hem stitched as with quilting, you know, with the, the cotton in between so that they were actually quilted squares and hem stitched. And then I crocheted them together and, and then did like a forget me not um, uh, edging on it. And that was a, a thing too. Though that I haven't seen as much, but that was a, a project that I would love to see come back because a lot of people are doing things with, you know, t-shirt quilts and stuff like that. And I'm thinking that would be so much fun to do. I should do that with all my Bon Jovi t-shirts. Yes. <laughs> That's why we're <laughs> such good friends. <laughs> I think you have a bag full of Bon Jovi shirts that I should probably do that with and see if it works. That would be amazing. I think yeah. you'd be Instagram famous if you did that. Yeah. Okay. So I want to open it up. Who who else has questions? I could I could talk Karen's ear off all day, but I'm sure you, you want guys me to talk about the jewelry really fast. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let's talk about the jewelry because that's actually where I was headed because you are some of the classes that you're teaching is a mashup of crochet and jewelry and please show that dragon bracelet because Paula has got to take that class. If she doesn't take that class and make me a bracelet, I'm going to die. Well, I'm doing two bracelet classes and they're very similar, but different. Um, I'm going to show you the first one is the beaded bling. And these are literally crocheted bracelets with beads. Uh, So if you look at this one, I don't know if you can really see the colors, but I used a variegated thread and when I crocheted the beads together, so the clear beads are showing the color through this. Here's just a solid bead rope. We call these beaded ropes. Okay. And so this is kind of a beginner's learned bead. But in this class, I'm going to teach how to string the beads. I have, um, I'm going to talk about how to make patterns like stripes. Um, here's one that I have two different sizes of beads. I don't know if you can see that. There's the bigger pink beads and the smaller orange beads that are together. This was my daughter's bracelet and I stole it from her so I could use it as a class sample. Um, are you going to use that bead but, spinner thing? You talk yeah, about so here's a, here's a better a example. Bead spinner. Here's a better example. The white beads are squares and the blue beads are round. And how you can line them up so that, because you're working in a spiral, so you have to know what the counts are between the beads. So that's what the first class is going to be about. You're going to be making something that looks like this in that class, but we're going to talk about all this. We're going to talk about how you can add stripes and flowers and all sorts of stuff. I'm even going to show you a piece of software that you can design your own jewelry. Um, Stop it. (laughs) And all you need to know is how to chain and how to to slip stitch. Don't Uh, even know how to have to know how to single crochet. Just those two basic stitches. My hands hurt already. <laughs> Paula makes a lot of jewelry, so it, it's it's great. I love it, but but it's it's inc- it's just gorgeous. And that's a beginner class. That's a beginner class. Now this is my dragon scales bracelet. Mm-hmm. Wow. These are made with Mega Thomas and Polly. If you since you do jewelry, you've probably seen something like this done in uh, peyote stitch. Yeah, but wow, this is done in crochet. And oh, I, we I need have to two do. of them. I have one that is traditionally, you know, the golds and the wow. greens and the bronzes of a dragon. But then I have this one that is, I did two different kinds of blues. One's shiny, oops, one's shiny and one's a matte. And then, do I have it here? Oh, yeah. I have, you have a video just showing what that process is. I can't even picture how it works. It's literally working in a circle. Okay. okay. The dragon scales. Here's a, a red and a gray. 
this is actually going to be the one where I'm going to show how to how to put the findings on. Um, but what's really cool about this, you'll notice that the red and the gray do not show the orange thread. I did that on purpose so you guys can see that I used orange thread, but the way we crochet them together, you can't see the orange through the stitches. Yeah. Wow. At all. Wow. And then with the, with the one that has the variegated, the thread looks like this and I just use clear beads. Okay. So you get cool things like that. Yeah. So, um, and this one in both classes, they come with everything pre-strung. Um, I also teach with the way I teach these, both of these classes is I, in your kits that you purchase with the class is, um, worsted white yarn with pony beads so that you can actually see what you're doing when you uh -huh. do it and learn yeah. the technique first. And then we go down to the thread because once you know what you're doing, then this, this skinny little thread doesn't, isn't so intimidating. And then the other thing I, I put in the instruction in the class materials is you get one of these. If you, it's, now I don't have a, I don't have the magnifiers attached to them, but it's also got a little light. Oh, so, yeah. that you can, so when you're in class, you can see it. I mean, I've been doing these for years and it's just recently now that I need, I need a magnifier, <laughs> but I, I have, I have the, uh, when I do my jewelry stuff, I have my magnifiers and I used to not wear them when I was at home beating, but I, I, I need them. I need all the lighting, all the stuff. Yeah. But just, I'm mind blown that. Can you show that drag at that dragon greeting goal? We need to see that one more time. That oh, is yeah. incredible. Yeah, so that's the Absolutely. regular, and then the, here's the, the blue one. So awesome. So do you name yeah. them like Khaleesi and after Game yeah. of Thrones characters? <laughs> that's exactly so it, with this class, I'm going to teach you how to string them so that they have the dragon scale, because they're Magatama beads, and they all have to be pointing in a certain direction to make it work. Um, but then you, you want to scatter the colors, and I'll talk about how to do that. And, um, and other things you can do, you know, with them too. So, but yeah, that's, those are the, the, that's my jewelry. I also have done, use these ropes to take, I, I didn't pull it out, but I have like a big medallion and I made two ropes that go on either side as a necklace. You can do smaller a diameter tubes and make like wrapped bracelets. You can do all sorts of things with this. So. So cool. Okay. So well, it's has a question. She says, where would you recommend an absolute beginner start? She's referring to me. <laughs> I think she's referring to her, but I'm going to go ahead and look. Well, I'll be honest. Um, I have a book that I wrote a few years ago. And I actually wrote this book for tweens, you know, not quite teenagers yet. But I have had more adults buy this book for themselves to learn to crochet. And it's called Crochet Projects That Will Hook You. And it literally, you can get it on Amazon. And I'm going to, I mean, I go through like the yarn, what all the, you know, worsted weight, double weight, double knitting, all that stuff talks about. Um, we talk about how to, how they're wound. We talk about hook sizes and how to pick your hooks, things like that. But then when you get to the projects, how to hold your hook, you know, all that kind of stuff. Then we get to the projects, they were designed for teen, you know, preteens, but I, you're making scarves and sweaters and hats and a pillow, um, a bag, you have mitts, fingerless mitts, there you go, dressed <laughs> up. Um, but, and I teach you, you know, not only, you know, how to do the stitches, how to read the pattern. You're going to learn how to read the pattern and how to do, you know, whip stitch them because they're, these are made flat and then how to whip stitch them so that you can you know, actually wear them on your hands. Um, you know, there's a hat. Oh, that's cute. And, you know, it, it's very popular with the homeschool, but I can't tell you how many people have written to me and said they bought this book and learned how to crochet from it. So... My favorite is this one. You know, Amazon Prime Day is tomorrow. Uh, yeah, Amazon Prime. I don't know if this is going to be on sale or not, but there's a blanket. Oh, that's cute. Um, 
So I teach you all, you're progressing through your stitches. So this is one way to learn. I mean, get a book, a good book that's, I would, I would definitely, even with adults, I would say get a kid's book because they're going to be broken down even further. Um, you can find a class online or at a store for beginner and crochet class. I'm actually, hmm? do you have one? I'm working on one right now. That's going to be completely free for beginners. Um, and it's all video based. Um, but I'm, I'm one of those teachers too, that you could take a class from me. That's all video based, but you can still ask me questions <laughs> and trust that, you know, you can find me. <laughs> so, but I, you know, I've, I've been known even with my patterns for someone who, if someone's working one of my patterns or using a pattern in one of my books, or even in well, in old magazines, they can email me and I will hop on a, a zoom call and help fix the problem. So I'm one of those people that is, are willing to do that. Okay, so Deborah asked in the chat, do you, are you teaching classes online or in person for the bracelets? The bracelets I'm teaching in, um, right now, I'm just teaching in person. And so I will be at DFW. I'm also teaching, I don't know where in the world you guys all are, but I'm teaching next month, I'm teaching both of those classes. No, just, just the Dragon Scales in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, at DFW, I'm teaching both of those in September. And then in at the end of October, I'm going to be teaching in Mesa, uh, Arizona. And I'll be teaching both of these classes along with other classes. I'm teaching eight classes in Mesa, seven at DFW, seven in Lancaster. Are the Pennsylvania and the Arizona, is that a fiber fest? It's well? yarn. It's yarn uh, fest for interweave or so. Know. But I do teach online. Um, right now, my online classes aren't up <laughs> uh, because I'm reworking a few things. Um, I had a, a big website issue earlier this spring, and I've had to fix that. And so now I'm slowly putting some of the pieces back together. So I'm hoping that once travel season's over at the end of October, <laughs> I'll be able to, <laughs> to get you know my classes going the way I want them to go. Awesome. We still have a couple of minutes. Does anybody else have any other questions? Well, I just found you very warm and inviting. I, I don't know you, but I any friend of Trista's is a friend of mine. And I'm I, I'm sh sh sad that I did not uh, invite my college roommate who has an amazing talent. And I'm going to I it, it just there's so many people that come to mind that know how to do this. I've just never had the patience to sit down and learn. But maybe I'll learn. So thank you for sharing your story. It's very cool. Oh, you're welcome. I don't, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always available. You know, if anybody wants to learn or have a question, I'm always glad to answer questions. Karen, have you done any wet felting? I just recently discovered that on YouTube and I'm just fascinated. I haven't done it yet. I have all the materials so in my, <laughs> in my stash closet because I, I met a, um, a wet felter in um about a year ago and we traded she took my books because she was a crocheter she took she got my books and she gave me a whole bunch of wet felting and needle felting stuff to oh, as, as, as swap and I still haven't done it I really need to do it but um yeah I think it's fascinating yeah it's it's really cool and I went to a shop I was just in Park City Utah for a couple of weeks and found a little um shop called uh, Wasatch Wool and Yarn and just absolutely blown away with all of the, the hand-dyed yarns and all the different textures. And I went there hoping to find the roving for the for the wet felting, but I I had to go, I came away with a couple um, you know, things of yarn because I couldn't stand it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's, <laughs> it's that's really my good, downfall but... when I go to events. The, the <laughs> markets are so great that I come home with, <laughs> I have to bring an empty suitcase to bring out my yarn. Right? Yeah, that's me at a quilt show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a problem. <laughs> so what is your... I do sew and I do knit too, so... Oh gosh, yeah, you're a glutton then. What, what is your favorite fiber to work with? If I had to pick, I'll be honest with you, I would have anything that had alpaca or silk in it. I could, I mean, alpaca is my absolute favorite just because how soft it is. It is so warm. You can't use it all the time, but I love the work with alpaca. Just the, 
the hand of it and all that, but anything yeah. with silk. I mean, you'll find a lot of my patterns, especially my garment patterns will be a merino silk blend just because I love the drape. I love how it feels on the body. I love how it, it works up in crochet. Yeah. yeah. The silk is beautiful. Yeah. Anybody this else? is this has been fun. It's fun. It's fun for some of us that know each other well and to to see just oh, I bet her mind's going this direction or that direction, and just uh, it's so it's such a such an unexplored territory for me. So I think it's really interesting. So thanks for sharing your time. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. My mom, you know, my grandmother when she taught me to crochet, she said. I, I taught you a skill and I want you to do something with it. And my mom always says that, no, it meant doing stuff for charity and all the, you know, the nieces and nephews and the grandkids and all that stuff. She said, you, she did not expect you to make a career out of it, but <laughs> it just kind of fell into my lap. And because I, I, I mean, I went to college for a computer science degree. I came out with a business and management information systems degree, but yeah. <laughs> How many people, how many people, how many people actually work? I mean, Laura might be the exception, but I am completely unrelated in my field and the creativity, the passion you have for this comes through. So, I mean, I know, I know you're, I, I can just see the fun in the back behind you. So very, very, <laughs> very, very interesting. So, yeah. Yeah. I it's just, you know, it's just something, it's my passion. I mean, I, like I said, I knit I, and I spin, but they're just kind of like to break up some of the stuff. Pat crochet, I could talk crochet 24 hours a day, seven days a week and never be bored. That's awesome. So yeah. fun. Do you have a recommendation for um, patterns or where to go to learn the stitches to do the, the more of the open move like that's on your, your uh, shawl? Because um, I like the, the more open kind of, yeah, kind of lacy like that. How, where do you look for that? Um, you, you can, can go online or anywhere. Oop. You're still here. That's weird. My screen did just says it's something weird. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, um, go like to Amazon or, you know, any bookstore and look for what you call crochet stitch dictionaries. And let me see if I, I got a couple right here. I can show you what they are. I'll give you two of my favorites. Oh, actually, I'll pull a third one. Oh, when we were talking about what is, um, what's another trend in crochet? Tunisian crochet. Oh, so these are all Tunisian crochet stitches. What is that? It's a dictionary, what it does. It what, actually, is, what is Tunisian? What makes it Tunisian? If you've ever seen this crochet hook, that's really long, no thumb rest with a stopper at the end, or you've seen the crochet hooks that have, um, that are probably about this long, you know, 14 to 16 inches, have a crochet hook on either end. It's a, it's a technique that was actually developed in Tunisia. That's why it's called Tunisian. But it's, it's, it's the closest to knitting that crochet can do. You get a ton of different kinds of stitches. And this has gotten really hot right now, too. Um, but see, this is what a stitch dictionary does. Oh, you that's do pretty. a bunch of stitches, and it teaches you how to do them. So this is one of my favorites. This is a um, relatively new, probably less than a year old, mm -hmm. if you want to learn Tunisian. And I'm actually teaching Tunisian basics in um dfw2 on um, this is a friend of mine robin chachula who did a visual she's an architect and she she um writes her stitch patterns in from that frame of mind in fact all of her, her garments are done in that architectural but hers are all in black and white but it's basically the same idea we can learn how to do different stitches but my absolute favorite stitch dictionary right now other than the one my grandmother gave me when I was learning crochet is this one it's called the new crochet stitch dictionary, 440 patterns. This one comes out of the UK and there are some stitches in here. I mean, I have stitch dictionaries that, I mean, I have a stitch dictionary from Italy that my grandmother brought with her <laughs> and this one still has, and she was born in 1903, just so you guys can get an idea how old that stitch dictionary is. This has stitches I have never seen before, ever, in it. And so that's why I had to buy it. Um, it's written more in the UK, UK terms, but this is an amazing stitch. This one I just got off on Amazon about, about maybe six months ago. 
But yeah, so you have no get- idea there was such a thing, but it makes perfect sense. Yeah. So a lot of my patterns, when I design patterns, I, I start with a stitch dictionary sometimes just to get my brain going. Yeah. But this is a good way to um, to learn how to do stitches. And then in October on my YouTube channel, I'm going to take my old stitch dictionary that my grandmother gave me, which I'll show you. This is not in print anymore. Um, this is the very first, you can see I had it bound because I used it so much. I'm gonna, there's um, 433 stitches in here and I'm going, at one a week, I'm going to do a video on how to do these stitches oh, all the way through. that's amazing. Everything, awesome. everything from motifs and st- regular stitches. There's hairpin lace in here. There's um, broomstick lace, which these are all old techniques that you hardly see anymore. But there's some people that are still interested in them. So I'm going to go through and do that. I love that. But I'll start in October. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> did I just rattle <laughs> your brain? <laughs> yeah, my, my chin's on the floor now. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, my, my brain just exploded. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Laura, do you have another question? You look like you have another question. Um, I'm sure I have 30 questions, but no, I'm just excited because I was just seeing that book reminded me that my grandmother used to do the the lace edge with a teeny tiny cotton thread and she mm-hmm. made sets of towels for all of the, the her kids and grandkids um, with beautiful lace edge along That's the towel. stuff I learned at seven and eight years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I still have those sets because I remember her, I remember her doing it. And uh, yeah. Oh yeah, no. And I mean, if you guys have questions even after this video, you can always go to my website and shoot me a note and I'm glad to answer questions. So. Well, that's a good segue. Why don't you tell them where you are on Instagram? It, what What's your favorite platform? Where are you the most active and how can they find you? Let's I'll be start. honest. My favorite is YouTube and you can find me at Karen Hooley Designs. I'll, you know, youtube.com slash Karen Hooley designs all together. Um, I also love Instagram and I'm just care at Karen Hooley all together, no spaces or dashes. And then I'm also on Facebook. Um, I'm not there as much, but I do have a Facebook page that's at um, Karen Hooley designs and you'll see my logo or and actually I think I just updated it. So it's my face, but yeah, and you can go to my website, which is karenhooley.com, and I have links to all of my social media there. And so we all know that you're coming to Dallas in September. Yeah. So a couple of things. Will I, I've recorded this, so if you have friends who like crochet or maybe like most of us on here that don't crochet – but would love to crochet. I think Karen's probably the most amazing teacher to teach it. So share this with them and I'll stick it on my website so you can share this with them. But then also when she comes to town, let's try and plan, you know, a meetup or something so you guys can meet her and can show her all the projects that you've made that that she inspired us to do. (laughs) I love that. I, I can tell you the only night that I can't for sure, I can't do it is Saturday night of the event because um, they do a teacher's dinner. I know that for a fact, but other than that. Um, awesome. Yeah. Well, well, we'll figure out a crow. A, a, a Karen do we know the dates of the event? They're the 14th through the 17th of September. Okay. I will actually- to- be in town that weekend and you know it's my birthday month and i'm usually celebrating the entire time so we call it sevi timber for a reason (laughs) for a reason (laughs) yes so we'll definitely have to figure something out where she can meet all of our our crafty friends absolutely all right so what i what i need to know is have you asked karen to do patterns for us for the golden girls event I have not because I don't know that Karen knows that that's the next theme. She knew what the last one was. So I put out two, um, cause you know, we do a theme for each time. So we're doing a summer challenge. It's just like a mini exchange and that's Barbie because you know, the Barbie movies coming out and oh yeah, there's 
I mean, just countless things go through your mind about that, right? But the next theme for Craftmas is the Golden Girls, the TV show. So, oh wow, that's what she's I referring to. <laughs> Yeah, so she's used to, you know, after every exchange, I'm like, here's show and tell. And, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah, I love I've seeing the show stuff you guys have made. You guys are all so talented. Yeah. All of you. Yeah, so Paula does a lot of jewelry. Laura does, she does a lot with fiber, but sometimes she shakes it up with, like, for our 80s, for our Stranger Things, she threw down the gauntlet with on, some shrinky dink. Um, come on the back porch and we'll break them down, okay? That were amazing. Um, Sevy's kind of like me, and we dibble dabble around in different different things. Sevy and I are more ADD crafters, I think. <laughs> Although you used to be really in like the sewing. She's- I just haven't. My sewing machine's just not set up. I do love sewing. Like sewing was one of those things where I tried to teach myself on YouTube. And Mm -hmm. then I was like, oh, this is not going to work. So I found a beginner sewing class. And I remember like the week before I tormented myself whether I wanted to take my sewing machine or not. And at the last minute, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take my sewing machine. And it was the best decision I ever made because I got like hands on one on one instruction because I had a different machine and everyone else was using the class machines. And that was it. I remember that week I went home and I made totes for everyone because we had (laughs) made a tote bag. And then from totes, it moved into everything else. And so now I have 18,000 quilt tops laying around just waiting to be quilted. (laughs) But they're started. That's what cool. (laughs) As as you do. (laughs) I've got a bin full of started quilts as well. But See, ADD craft craft hoarders. Hoarders unite. <laughs> yeah. Cra- craft hoarders anonymous, right? Yes. I mean, I, I do. Yes. Uh, I think I could, could probably with this group start a craft store. We have so much stuff. So yeah, for sure. Thanks but, again. Yeah. I'm going to drop off. I really appreciate yes. you guys, but I'm sorry. I inter- got to share my box details with Kendall, but thanks for, thank you, Karen. It was so fascinating. Oh, I love um, listening to thank you. Thank you so much, Karen. All this right. was an thank absolute you, pleasure. Your oh, main yeah. friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully we'll see you in September. Yeah. Yay. Hey. All right. Let me go check on my mini one. Okay. Okay. Bye ladies. Have a good night. Located Karen. Mm-hmm. Where are you located? I'm in Pasco, Washington. Oh, okay. South, southeastern side of the state um, in the high desert. Oh, wow. So yeah, not in California. Washington State that you would think of. Yeah. Closer to Idaho? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm literally um 20 minutes minutes from the Oregon border and probably about an hour and a half from Oregon or uh Idaho. Okay. Right. Yeah. How fast can you get there, Laura? I know. Yeah. Let me let me put it in my map. <laughs> I'm near Denver, so not okay. too far. Okay, yeah. She goes to my cities a lot. Yeah. Yeah, my I'm actually friends. just in Denver, or I was in Loveland. Oh, yeah. In, in April, and I'll probably, hopefully, be there again this in the coming April. So. Oh, okay, good. Can, is there a, a mailing list that we can join on your site? Yes, I do have a newsletter, mm-hmm. and yeah, and I always have all the classes I'm teaching, and where I'll be, and what's new. I mean, I I have all sorts of stuff going on. Okay. In the newsletter, so. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Sounds fabulous. I I have to come up with something to do with that beautiful yarn that I brought back from Utah. So I'm not sure what I'm doing yet. What color is it? Is it near you? Um, no, it's in the other room. It's kind of a pinky coral. One of them is like a, a smooth cotton, and then one of them is a mohair. And they're similar in color, so they'll blend really pretty together. I bet Karen's got some ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what the yardage is and, you know, that, and what weight it is. You know, there's lots of things. Because I just, it was almost like just getting a sampling just to have a souvenir, but yeah. Um, even if I could just do a, a little cowl or something, 
Oh yeah. Well, look, I mean, you can look at my, the cows on my website too, and see because if you, depending on how much yarn you've got, I've got some easy cows there, or, or, you know, if you want to connect and I can help you come up with something. Oh, okay. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm smelling weird cooking smells from downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> Investigate what that's all about. Um, but thank you so much for your time. No, oh, you're welcome. I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. It's fun. Now I've got all kinds of ideas going on. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> Thanks, Trista. We'll talk to you soon. Welcome. Thanks, Lori. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. That was it's fun. Amazing. Yes. They're great. I have a feeling that um, once I do the video, I think that they'll they'll probably share it with people that they know. And I know some of the girls who didn't make it will want to see it as well. I'm sorry. My puppy is so annoying right oh, yeah. now. She's trying to get my attention. She keeps running up and like pushing my chair and I'm like, <laughs> come here. Funny. Anyway. Yeah. Thank you. I had to close the door so the cats wouldn't come in. <laughs> this, oh. If I could like crochet oh, things for her, I, that would probably be enough inspiration for me to get started. Is that, is that yeah. the puppy? Yes, she's huge. Oh my gosh. She's huge. She's huge. She's huge. Oh she's gosh. She, she was sure looks like before. I know. And now she is she's a holy terror. She's 20, she's probably 22 pounds. Oh wow. So cute though, that face. Big and bad. <laughs> cute. But cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, so I'll stick it on my website and I'll give you the video too if you if you want it for anything. I'll well, as long it. as I get a link and then I can send it to you know my newsletter subscribers to come watch yeah. it too. Yeah. So yeah. So much fun. Yeah. It You're welcome. Amazing. You're it was welcome. amazing. So oh. we'll have to do this again in like a year or something. So we can kind of get some more momentum with it and, yeah. and showcase you again, especially if you come back to DFW Fiberfest because we can do it as a pre-show for you again. Oh, we could. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. If they try to mix up the teachers because they've been, what, this is their 15th year, 16th year. And I know this is my third time back. So, so I don't know if I'll be there next year or not, but I, I always pitch classes for them. So. Um, okay, so no Saturday night, and you yeah, said I know for sure that, and I haven't heard anything else that they are expecting me to be at. I mean, I'm arriving on the 13th because they need me to be there. They have they're such a great event. They they come pick me up from the airport. They drive me everywhere. They um, yeah, they take me to the hotel. Uh, then then yeah, the I was going to do all that. Go to the classroom. They pick me up and they drive me to the hotel. It's I mean to the convention center. It's it's crazy how they treat their teachers. It's they go well above and beyond. Well, I would think though that they'd have you stay in the hotel that's right next to the convention center. There's a they, new place think, in there. I don't know. Well, they used to when they they were at a different place. Is there a like grapevine? Is that uh huh? something like that. They used to be there and there was a hotel that was so far away that they put us at. That's when they started this. Mm -hmm. And the last time I was here, it was Irving and the hotel was maybe a mile away. They put us up in the, the premier hotel that they book with. So okay, I don't know which hotel it is this year, but. Well, you'll have to tell me where it is. Yeah. Cause you know, I live like right by the airport and like oh, a okay. mile, mile and a half from the convention center. Literally. Oh, wow. Okay. So like I'm super close. So, okay, okay. So it's the 13th through the. Yeah, I'll be there the 13th through the 17th. And then the 17th, I'm flying out um, to, to Austin, actually, to see my cousin. She's going to pick me up at the Austin airport. And then I'm going to see her for a couple of days and then fly home. Fly home from there. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right. So I'll check, I'll do a poll on our craft exchange to see when they have most of the yeah. availability and, and we'll get together for dinner or something. That'd be fun. That would be fun. I think that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can have a, a whole bunch of groupies. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. You say that. I mean, I just, I feel like sometimes I'm the, uh, 
you know, I'm, I'm just doing my own thing. And, and I don't realize what people think of what it is that I'm doing, but. Yep. It's just, we'll have like t-shirts on. Oh, there you go. If you guys showed up like that, I would probably just die. <laughs> oh, don't put it past us. Oh, she just sent me a picture of the yarn that she got. Oh, this is pretty. I bet she would have liked to. Let me see if I can get it in chat. Um, okay. Mm, did it just download? Well, here I can, I can share it though. Let, let me share my screen. Okay. See it. It's really pretty. Oh, okay. Oh, that mohair together. Oh, she could totally make a cowl where she held the two strands together. Mm -hmm. That's pretty. That's really pretty. Have you heard of that brand? Um. Is that a, yes. Is that um, the well, the, the, the mohair for sure. That's Mono del Uruguay. Um, that's yeah. I know Mono's very well. Um, song. I don't know. Oh, that's classic elites. Yes. Classic elite. I know as well. I just saw the, the, the color maybe. Yeah. 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 She could definitely do a cowl or a hat or something. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, I think I we talk in like two weeks. So, I will yeah. See you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, have a good okay. trip. Thanks. I'll talk to you, you soon. later. Bye. And thanks for this. Oh, thank you. It's amazing. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye.